Cosby, well done. Hi, Elkhorn Middle School. I'm Miss Cosby, seventh grade science teacher, and we're here tonight to talk to you guys about how tomorrow is going to look and how our first little bit of virtual schooling is going to look. So we have four staff members here. We have Mr. Rohde, our principal. We have Miss Coblin, one of our exploratory teachers. We have Miss Wright, um, a seventh grade math teacher, and we have Miss Ratterman, who is our new CIA coach. So we're all here to talk a little bit about how tomorrow is going to look. And then at the end, we're going to have everyone, if you have questions, you can type them in as comments, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. Remember, if you have a question, we're only answering general questions. So if you have a specific question about a teacher or your child, that needs to be directed towards an individual like their teacher by email or phone call. But if you have a general question about how things are gonna look the next couple of days, feel free to type them in as a comment and we will try to answer them at the end. Um, otherwise, we're gonna head to Mr. Rohde and he's going to talk a little bit about our day tomorrow. All right, Mighty Elk community, good evening. Uh, so the schedule tomorrow, I'm just gonna cover the first uh, half of the day. Uh, Ms. Coblin will cover the second half. Uh, but tomorrow we are, well, so first off, we are doing an A, B day schedule. We've decided that uh, in the best interest of the students to get them off to a good start in this virtual uh, experience that uh, we could give them manageable workloads that they could cover over a day or possibly two, but not something that would extend the entire day and keep them on a computer screen all day. Uh, so we are going to be on an A, B day schedule. Tomorrow we are starting on an A day. Uh, on A days, the students will attend their first three classes. Uh, Ms. Fryer did a good video, if you haven't had a chance to see it, on our YouTube uh, channel about how to read a schedule and know what are the first three classes. So please, uh, at some point before tomorrow, make sure you uh, get on there and, and read that. Um, uh, basically periods one, two, and three, not counting MVP time. So we are not doing MVP time while students are out of the building. Uh, will be tomorrow and then uh, Thursday, they will be in the last three classes of their day. Uh, so it's really important as you read a schedule uh, that you be able to look at the first three classes and the last three classes. All the Google Classroom codes are on the schedule. Uh, some, some of the students you need to probably check the infinite campus if you can, uh, in case there's been any moving around um, but uh, ultimately, I think uh, we will get every kid uh, into their right classrooms and logged in and, and participating in the Google Meets uh, very shortly here, if not uh, all the way through Thursday. So again, A, B day schedule. Tomorrow's an A day. They'll have three classes they need to log into, 840, 940, and 1040, uh, and we will get them sort of accounted for uh, and into the classrooms. Okay, now we're gonna hear from Ms. Coblin, our life skills teacher, and she's going to talk about how the afternoons are going to look. Okay, so in the afternoon, when you finish your third class, so at 11.40, what you need to do then is take a stretch break. Walk, take a recess, go for a walk, do something to Get that blood flowing again where you've been sitting for three hours. Um, we have time scheduled in, an hour scheduled in for you to have a little recess and lunch break. Then from 1245 until 315, that is when students need to focus on completing their assignments for the day and working on the things that teachers have asked them to complete before the next class period or the next day that that class meets. So from 1245 until 315, if you have any questions, if you're stuck, if you need extra assistance from your teacher, that is when you need to reach out to the teacher that you need the extra assistance from. And the way that you need to do that is sending them either an email, that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with that teacher. Or you could call the school and ask to speak to that teacher directly, but they may not be right there where they can answer the phone immediately. So one of the things that you are going to be taught tomorrow or Thursday, if you haven't already been taught this, is how to use your Gmail, how to write an email to a teacher. Um, and. Also, your teachers are gonna go over what you specifically need to make sure you say in that email so that your question gets answered as quickly as it can be answered and in the best way possible. So, after you finish your work for the day or 3.30 comes, whichever comes first, I guess, you need to take another stretch break at 3.30 and 
while we have this nice beautiful weather please get outside and enjoy it um, do something to kind of wind down and also after school hours get in touch with your friends some of you have really missed out on socializing you've missed your friends um, so work on your mental and emotional health and just to add on to what Ms. Coblin said, if you are in need to a face to face with a teacher in the afternoon, we will also be available to do like a one on one Google meet with you if you need to see someone and work through some of the problems you're having. Um, now we're going to hear from our curriculum instruction and assessment coach, Ms. Ratterman, and she's going to talk to us about the online program we're going to be using this year called Admitum. Hello, and I'm so happy to be a part of the family now. Um, we chose Admitum just so that we had all one place to house all of your instruction. It is a um, learning management system that has curriculum that relates to the Kentucky standards um, to make sure that you are getting exactly what it is that you are supposed to get virtually um, instead of you being in, in, instead of you being in the building, you will be um, virtually getting exactly what your teachers want you to, to have. Um, in addition to the eventum, your teachers will be adding other resources um, to their Google Classrooms, Ms. Wright will talk to you about that in just a little bit. Um, the benefits of Edmentum is that you were able to track your progress. You're gonna have one login. You will be able to see all of your classes on that login. Um, so all six of them will pop up for you to see and you can see like what you're supposed to be working on, how far along you are, how much time you have left to do it. Um, and then you can message your teachers through that platform or their email. Um, and teachers, your first block, teacher should have sent you a username and password so that you have the ability to log on. If not, they will get that to you in the morning so that you can get on, you can see what your dashboard looks like. Um, you're able to also check your progress, just kind of see like how you're doing, if you've achieved mastery on the standards which you've been assigned, and just by looking at the progress bar at the top and you can kind of check. Edmonton will give you like, you know, did you master it or do you need to have a little bit more skills? And if you need a little bit more practice with that subject or that standard, then your teacher will be reaching out to you. You guys will be setting it up and then you'll be able to try it again until you get it mastered. Okay, and now we'll hear from Ms. Wright, one of our seventh grade math teachers, and she's going to be talking to us how, about how Google Classroom is organized this year. All right, hey everyone. Um, so in Google Classroom, your kid on like the home page of Google Classroom should be signed into six different classes. So they should have their four core classes plus two exploratories. Um, and then also when you click into each class, there should be or there will be a Google Meet link in the header um, that you all, that the kids will click to go into their Google Meets. Um, also, students sometimes forget to look at the classwork tab on Google Classroom. That's kind of where assignments will be organized, um, whereas the stream just might kind of be like a jumbled hot mess. So make sure you go and check the classwork tab so that things are nice and pretty and organized and easy to find. Um, the way assignments are going to be labeled is they're going to have the due date, the assignment name, and an assignment number. Those things will match up directly with Infinite Campus to kind of make it easier um, for you to see what assignment students, your student has turned in and which ones maybe they, they've missed. Um, and then also in Google Classroom, teachers are going to have pre-recorded lessons or pre-recorded videos that students can watch and then plus some supplemental resources like practice or um, just some things that they can do to review the material from their recorded lesson and from their live session. Uh, we did have a question come in asking if teachers were going to provide links for all of the things that students need and the answer to that is yes. The link will be the same for Edmentum through all their classes so they'll just have to bookmark one link, log in, and they'll be able to see all six of their classes in Edmentum and some of us already have that Edmentum link up but otherwise that will be provided and we will go over how to log in and how it's supposed to look tomorrow and we'll practice it for at least two days before students will be expected to complete any work. All right, if we don't have any other questions, none have come in the entire time, um, I'm just gonna say we're super excited for the school year tomorrow. We've all been here for the past two weeks working really hard trying to make things as easy as possible for kids and for parents. 
So although we are all very sad we can't see your faces in person tomorrow, we are glad that we're able to come to you virtually. If you have any problems, please do not hesitate to get in touch with your child's teacher, with your teacher, with someone in the front office, and we will provide as much help as we possibly can. Okay, everybody needs to log into their Chromebooks tonight, not wait until 8.35 tomorrow morning. Log into your Chromebooks tonight, sign up for your Google Classrooms tonight. All of your Google Classroom codes are on your schedule. So if you came and picked up your Chromebook, you should have gotten your schedule. All the codes are on your schedule so that you can log into your Google Classrooms tonight so you're ready to go in the morning. Don't forget that Mr. Rohde will be live on this very YouTube channel tomorrow morning at 8.35 for announcements. So you will be able to see him and hear anything that he has to say in the morning. Okay, we did have one question come in. It says, will all teachers post a link for Google Meet on the day of school? Is that what that means? Okay, your Google Meet links are embedded in the header of Google Classroom. So if you go to, for instance, I teach science, and if you are in my science class, if you go to the Google Classroom for my science class, the very top, it'll say Cosby seventh grade science first period. Right underneath that is a link to your Google Meet. It will be the same every day. You can only log in if I am logged in, so you can only get in there if I have started the Google Meet, and it will be there every day. It's the same link every day. So that does not change, and it is always embedded in that header of Google Classroom. Okay, we have a question about how attendance is going to be, so we're going to go to Mr. Rohde for that answer. So attendance works on a couple different levels. Uh, yes, you know, ch children uh, that enter into the Google Meets during that class period will be counted as attending the class. Uh, but you know, in this virtual world, there are times where things like the internet goes down, uh, maybe the internet goes down here or goes down at home. I mean, there's various factors that could prevent that from happening. So uh, another way a child could be counted attended is if they, at some point during the day, get back on that internet or find a place and they go and they complete the assignment for that class. So for example, if I'm you know, in Miss Cosby's first period class and I can't get on the Google Meets, but she's assigned uh, an assignment and I, you know, later that night I'm finally able to get on and I complete the assignment, uh, I am actually counted as attended for that class. Um, if both things are unable to occur, meaning the assignment can't get done and I can't get on Google Meets, um, then the other way we can work with you on attendance is if you call in or if you answer, if Ms. Cosby were to call you that night that it, during the student service time in the afternoon and, and to talk to you, there's also the option to count that as well. So we have three different ways that we can ensure your child is counted for that class in the day. It's being in the Google Meet, attending, doing the work, and then if either of those can't be completed because of issues, then reaching out to Ms. Cosby via the phone or uh, any of the teachers via phone or and talking to them on the phone could be counted. Okay, we also are hoping that if you are concerned about all the links that you're being responsible for, first of all, you're actually not responsible for that many. If you can get into Google Classroom, you're good because we're gonna have everything posted in there. But we are going to hopefully add to everyone's Chromebook Edmentum as a bookmark at the top. So you'll just be able, you could do that yourself, but also we're going to try to add it to everyone's so everyone can just click on that link at the very top where it's bookmarked and you'll be able to get there. Okay, we don't seem to have any other questions right now. Oh, just kidding. Ms. Osherlo is reading. We'll see what the question is. Um, all right, the question is, how do we make sure that kids don't cheat? So that is an issue that we're concerned about. Um, I'm gonna let Mr. Rohde take the rest of this question. <laughs> so as I kind of explained the Facebook video that we did a little while back that is posted on the YouTube channel, you know, um, virtual learning is, is not something that we just adopted in, in public schools and around the country are doing for the first time. Colleges, I mean, multiple colleges have virtual learning. Uh, jobs do virtual learning embedded in their trainings um, you know there's always you know that temptation uh, you know we're gonna lean heavily 
uh, on the parents for you all to try to help us. I mean, there are there are ways we can tell, and uh, we will we will try to ensure that kids understand that we can tell when there are instances of cheating, and so we will be able to have those conversations. But you know, there's like anything, there's always pros and cons, and that's one that is that is tricky. Uh, but um, you know, it doesn't benefit you at all because at some point the kids are going to be back in school. And if they did perhaps cheat their way through the first six weeks or however long, that's just going to show back up when they're here. So, um, you know, we hope kids will take advantage of, of the true learning. I think that's why we did the, the half school or the half days of eight, one through three, one day and four through six. So they wouldn't feel so overwhelmed to where things like cheating would be necessary because they're just getting behind. So, um, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's difficult because of the nature of the virtual world, but Again, we hope kids will understand that it's really not to their benefit. It may be a short-term thing, but in the long term, it's gonna come back to get them. So uh, all we can do is hope and advocate that they don't do that. And then if we do see it, then we'll address it. Okay, we're getting a lot of questions about how the Google Meets are going to work. So just to reiter reiterate, they're meeting three classes a day in the morning. First period will be at 8.40 on an A day. Second period will be at 9.40, and third period will be at 10.40. Then on a B day, it will go fourth, fifth, sixth, same times, 8.40, 9.40, 10.40. The Google Meet link will be the same for, for, the, for their classes. So like my first period science Google Meet, the link stays the same every day. So every other day, every A day at 8.35, they need to get on their Google Classroom, go just to, as soon as they log in, there's a header that says first period science, right underneath it there's a link. They cannot get on it right now because I am not logged in. So nobody can practice it right now, but I will be logged in tomorrow morning. Every kid will be able to click on that link and it will take them straight, straight to their Google Meet where they'll be able to see me on, on their computers. Um, kids have done this before, I promise they'll be able to figure it out. But for the first few days, we are obviously going to be very accommodating. So if they get there late, if they need more instruction on how to get to that Google Meet link, we will be there to help them. So don't worry if you come late, late tomorrow morning to your Google Meet first thing in the morning, because we're all figuring this out. Um, but we're going to be very understanding if kids are struggling in the morning. Okay. So <clears throat> we have a question about how if parents in the if parents in the household if nobody's home to help their children um, and and what can we do to to support you? So I'm going to go to Mr. Rohde to talk about how we can offer support to those families. So one of the very first things we decided, or we were thinking, we saw the virtual option being a possibility, whether it would have been hybrid or full. Uh, we really focused on. What, what obviously could we have done better from MTI? Now remember, we had three days. We found out three days before we went on the first outage that we were going on an outage, and we were told it was gonna to be two weeks. And I think much of the, the nation thought it was gonna be temporary and then extended for the rest of the year. So we learned a lot from that experience. And the one thing we learned is that we understood that what was confusing to parents was how the Google Classroom was presented uh, how a parent could support a child if, they, if the child was struggling. Um, so one thing that we really considered this year was the parent. And we, we, we really tried to consider you all if we had to go virtual. And so on our Google Classrooms, we really worked hard to do things like pre-recorded videos. So these are pre-made lessons or pre-made uh, lessons or yeah, pre-made lessons that teachers did in order to help sort of teach the concepts, the supplemental materials, and then the Edmentum program itself. Uh, was put in place to basically give the child a lot more than just a piece of paper that says this is, you know, here's the assignment, but really brought in the uh, teaching aspect in terms of, you know, if I'm a parent sitting there with my kid, can I help them? And the answer hopefully is yes, because you're going to have a lot of resources that will sort of remind you of what it is that is being asked. We also, that's the reason for that SST time. The reason why we built in that afternoon was for this purpose to be able to support you all more, to be in contact with you more, to do more small groups, to do more mentoring. Uh, hopefully here pretty soon we can even bring kids in, into the building in the afternoon in groups of 10 uh, or 20 or more, depending on how good we can do on our protocols, uh, to really support all the parents in the community and the student through this time. Uh, and then hopefully we can get back to a, a, a more uh, in-person setting. 
We also have some questions about behavior issues during the Google Meets. So teachers have the capability of muting kids' mics. So if there's somebody who is uh, being disruptive to the, to the Google Meet, we can mute them. And then if that behavior continues, we can remove them from the Google Meet. So if that happens, they still can complete the assignment that's been posted for the day. And they, the first time, we will probably call you or email you and let you know that your kid was being disruptive. And then if it doesn't happen again, then we have no problem. If that kind of behavior disruption during the Google Meet continues, it is going to be treated as a behavior issue, just like it would in the classroom. So our administration would be notified if that behavior continues over time. But teachers do have the capability to mute people and then to remove people from the Google Meet if they continue to be a disruption. We're also getting uh, questions about mics and cameras being turned on in your home. Um, if kids want their cameras to be turned on, they are more than welcome to have them turned on. If they don't and they would rather us not see them, if they're participating and doing their work, that is fine as well. So we love to see their faces, but also some of us might be on our Chromebooks, which don't host a large number of people. Great. They do, they do a pretty good job, but it helps sometimes if everyone turns off their cameras just so things go more smoothly. So listen to your teachers in the morning and they might ask sometimes for everyone to turn cameras off. Um, we do ask that everyone does mute themselves unless you're being asked to talk just because it helps with background noise and being able to hear each other. So <clears throat> keep yourself muted if possible and then teachers do have the capability of muting you and um, the capability to remove you from the Google Meet as well. Hang on one second, we're trying to figure out this question. We're going to go to Ms. Wright to talk about, sorry, we're having a very high tech um, issue here with the whiteboard writing the questions out. We're going to go to Ms. Wright and she's going to tell us about a communication discussion board that we'll be using. Okay, so I think the question was asking um, how kids can talk even outside of email if they have general questions. So in Google Classroom, on assignments and on posts, if teachers have opened this up for students to be able to use, because sometimes it's misused and we turn it off, um, kids can leave comments on assignments and that way they can kind of help each other through them if they're having some general questions and their teacher can respond to them. So I think that, does that answer? Okay. All right. So far we don't have any other questions. Oh, one just came in. Hang on, we're getting it. Oh, athletics. We have a question about athletics. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Rohde. <laughs> so I guess a couple questions. I got. One question is, are we having it? And the answer is, as far as I'm aware, yes, we're having athletics this year. Um, we know the KHSAA did both, and the high school sports are moving forward. And if they're moving forward, then my guess is we're moving forward. Um, you know, we are in a conference, so uh, as far as I'm aware, the conference is getting together to do the schedules. And we've been, I know they've been planning a schedule in the event of an approval, uh, but I, I do believe that athletics are still a district decision. I, I'm, I'm not sure if they voted on it yet at the board meeting. I don't believe they've had that discussion yet. Um, but uh, I know districts are having that individual um, discussions. Um, as far as, you know, what I would just advise a lot of athletes is, you know, you're responsible for your work, you're responsible for completing your work just as if you were here. Um, so please make sure that if your child is planning on doing athletics in the fall, you know, um, uh, during this time, or let's say it extends into the winter, that they be as diligent with their work as they would have been if they were in the building to remain eligible. But as far as I'm aware, I'm, I'm pretty aware we were going to be having sports uh, at this time. All right, we had a question about when assignments will be due. This will obviously change depending on the assignment, but typically you will have two days 
to do the assignment for your classes. So for instance, A day this week will meet Wednesday and Friday. So we'll see the same three classes, Wednesday morning and Friday morning. The assignment that I post on Wednesday will be due for class on Friday. So you have Wednesday morning, you'll have a little bit of time during our Google Meet to work on it. And then you'll have the afternoon to finish it up if you need to. Thursday, you'll be given new assignments for your three, after your three fourth, fifth, and sixth periods. Um, and then Friday, your assignments will be due from your A day. So typically you will have two days to do all of your classes assignments. Okay, uh, we just got a question about Google Chat that is active. Okay, so if you just wanna chat with us, which is like, it's, a, it's in your emails, you can just send us a quick message. You can just send us a Google Chat if you have questions um, and you can, you'll get a response from us then. So it'll be similar to emailing. If your Chromebook breaks, Ms. Oshelow has sent home a lot of information about this already um, when you guys came and got your schedule and came and got your Chromebook. So there is a link, so if you need to reset your password, there is a link on the EMS homepage where you can reset your own password. If you completely don't know your password, you can email Ms. Ostrello or one of your teachers and we can fill out a tech ticket for you to have it reset. Um, so if that happens, just email us and we'll get it taken care of. If your Chromebook breaks, you will again need to contact Ms. Ostrello here in the library. You can call and talk to her or you can send her an email and tell her what the problem is. You need to do that immediately um, if your Chromebook breaks so we can get it taken care of. At the moment, Chromebooks are scarce because obviously everyone in the entire district has one. So if you are not taking care of your Chromebook, you might not get a new one right away. So please, please, please take care of them, treat them very well, shut them down every night, plug them in every night and then start them up in the morning so that they can do any updates that they need to do. But if it does break accidentally, you can contact Ms. Oshelow to have it fixed. Can you show me that again? I wasn't, sorry. Yes, so all of your work is on your Chromebook this year. That is um, virtual learning, 100% of it will be on your Chromebook. So it will all be nothing on paper unless we have major extenuating circumstances, but all of your work will be on your Chromebook. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, we are all super excited to see all your faces virtually tomorrow. Um, we hope everybody has logged into their Google Classrooms tonight. Everybody get up before 8.30 so you're ready to go for the day. Um, and we will see you all uh, on Mr. Rody's announcements right here on this YouTube channel at 8.35 and then otherwise the rest of us will see you in our classes. We hope everybody has a wonderful year.